All right, YouTube, so in today's video, I'm gonna help you guys set up your brand new M2 MacBook Air 15 inch or any MacBook for that matter. Uh, these are a lot of tips and tricks that you may or may not know, but they should improve your Apple experience on your laptop, especially if you're new to this. So number one, first thing I like to do is I change the resolution. These screens have a nice resolution, especially now that you have a 15 inch display that I like to take advantage of all of the screen real estate. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here to uh, displays, uh, if I can find it. Nah, but, <laughs> all right, so we go to displays and it's set to default by default, but I like to go to more space, always. I always turn on more space. As you guys can see, which gives you a 1920 by 1243 resolution. Oh, that's really dope that they added the resolution when you hover over it. I don't know if that's been there or not. I've never paid attention. I just always went to more space. And then I turn off True Tone. So I turn off True Tone because me as a content creator, as someone who's editing photos and video, like the actual color of it, I don't want True Tone to ever intervene with that. But if you're not doing any of that, you can leave True Tone on. The second most important thing I do, I got to change it to tap to click. So typically with the trackpad, you have to press and get like this feedback. But I like to just tap. And it makes it just so much quicker and smoother and more intuitive. So if I go down here to trackpad and if I go here, tap the click, turn that on. Now, instead of me having to press and get that feedback, you know, that haptic feedback, I just have to tap. I love that. Now, the next thing I got to do is we change the screen real estate. As you guys saw, we got more screen real estate, but the dock is still big and chunky. And I'm not a big fan of that. I like to like, you know, just kind of, I'll show you guys. It's better to show you than to tell you. So I'll take the dot down to a smaller size, which also gives off you that feel that you have more of your screen to work with and play with. And also, if you're into this, you can hide the dock. If you don't want the dock there, so like right here, hide, automatically hide and show dock. So if I scroll down, it pops up. You can also move your dock. If you don't want your dock at the bottom, you can put it off to the right. So if I go over here, it's on the right side. You know, typically the standard placement is the bottom. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you guys is with the desktop, right? Let's say if I come to the desktop, let's say if I take a bunch of screenshots, right? And they're gonna all load onto my desktop. And as you guys can see, that starts to fill up your desktop. Start to get a cluttered space. And that's the last thing we want is cluttered. So you can literally just with two fingers tap, cause I just turned on tap to click. And I can go right here to use stacks. And that condenses anything that is similar. Now here's another thing I do with my uh, desktop, not only do I organize it in this way, but I also change the sizing of everything to add on to that screen real estate and screen resolution. If I right click and then I go to show view options, right? Icon sizes. I make my icon sizes smaller and then also lower the text size to as small as can be to a 10. So as you guys can see, that made it nice and neat and tucked away into that top corner. I love that setup right there. I also like the stack by kind. So everything that's like you know, it'll stack together. And then um, you can sort it by kind as well. I like to sort by kind. So folders are together, photos are together, and so on. That's something else that I do. I wanna show you guys a trick to add in the wallpaper because it's not as intuitive unless you do this trick. Okay, so if we go back into system settings, which if you guys don't know how to get to system settings, is literally click on Apple, system settings, and now you're in there. If I go under uh, wallpapers, so in here, you're just only given the collections that are offered to you with Mac OS. But if you want more, if you want to use your own, you can add a folder. So down here under add a folder, I'm going to click. And then in my pictures folder, which I didn't put in my finder yet. So before we jump into this step, freeze frame, we're going to open up finder really fast. And uh, I always like to sort my finder by columns. That's what I like to do. But as you can see right here, it just only has AirDrop, Recents, Applications, Desktop, Documents, and Downloads, but I want more than that. So I'm gonna go into the Preferences, which here's a shortcut tip, uh, Command Comma, always gets you into the Preferences. Now, if I want, I can turn on the hard disk on my desktop. So if you want your hard disk to show on your desktop, you can do that here. And then on the sidebar, I can turn on pictures, music, movies and you can turn on whatever you choose but those are the main things that i'm going to turn on because in my pictures folder is where i keep the wallpapers folder okay wallpaper add folder so now on the left side as you guys can see i got the pictures folder at easy access and then we got wallpapers and i'm going to hit choose so now i have all of these personal wallpapers and i can go into here so i could go to show all and then now i see all of them and then we could pick a fire one so like that's pretty 
Nice. We got some real Apple boy, you know, Apple fanboy um, wallpapers. But then we got some nice, these nice little blue ones right here. Pretty subtle. I like that. That right there. Bam. Okay. So now, as you guys can see, my system is coming together and it's becoming more customized for me. Again, you can use whatever wallpaper you want. I got more back there if you want. You know, let's see. We got that. Oh, that right there matches the theme of this, like, golden starlight setup right here. You know, if you're in the vehicles like I am, Audi R8. Player got to get one of those one day. All right, let's go to this mustard colored apple background. I like that. Okay, so now we're back at the finder because I want to show you guys a couple tips, a couple views that you might want to turn on that are super useful. And they're really easy to get to. So in finder, if you just go to the top bar and you go to view, you can turn on the path bar, which shows you exactly where that file is. So like if I click on the screenshot, it shows the path to how to get to that file. So, you know, it's on the Mac HD, and then it's user, then it's my name, then it's desktop, and that's exactly where that file is. There's another one that's really cool. Is it the status bar, I believe, where you get to see the status of like the folder and the sizing, uh, the status of your hard drive and so forth. So right now, as you guys can see on my hard disk, I have 207 gigabytes left. You know, this is the 256 base model. Uh, M2 MacBook Air 15 inch. So this is always helping you keep an eye on the status of your hard drive, which I think is super useful and super convenient. All these others showing high, you know, tab bar, show all tabs and things like that. I never really use those, but I do use the uh, path and the status because those two I find extremely useful when navigating uh, my MacBook. All right. So some more uh, areas where you can change things is the control center. If you don't know what the control center is, that's this right here. Now, I wanna show you guys a trick within this control center to help you have easy access to like your audio and so forth and things like that. I like to make adjustments and change audio you know, sources all the time. Like I might be on my headphones, I might have my speakers hooked up. It depends on where and how I'm using the device. So as you guys can see, if you look at the top bar, you can just see like my screen recording, battery, uh, you can change your network and then you can get here to the control center. Well, I don't wanna have to open the control center and change my sound, so I can just drag this up to here. As you guys can see, it creates that icon right there and boom, now I have access to changing my sound source. So as you guys can see, this is super duper convenient, especially if you're in a home with a lot of different sound sources and more Apple devices like, you know, AirPods or HomePods and things like that. You can change your uh, audio source extremely fast. Okay, I see my battery and I can see a visual of the battery, but I can't see the percentage. So if I were to go here, um, right here in the control center, as you guys can see under battery, and if I click on show percentage, now I see exactly how much battery I have left. So I'm at 77%. And this computer has been sitting in standby for a while now because I've been very, very busy. That's why this video is just now getting to you, but it is what it is. You know, the hustle and the grind does not stop. And there's something else with battery I want to show you, especially if you guys choose to leave your device plugged in. There's a nice feature that you want to turn on if it's not already on. So if you go right here under battery health and I hit the I, it's this one, optimize battery charging. To reduce battery aging, your Mac learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging and pass 80% until you need to use it on battery. So that's super duper clutch. If that's not turned on, turn that on. So I use my MacBook Pro 14 inch exclusively docked and plugged in. And that helped a lot because when I was on and using it, it wouldn't go past like, you know, a certain percentage, but then when I turned it off, it would charge and get it up and then so forth. So it's just helping reduce those cycles and the cycling of the battery and the battery health and just the longevity of that battery. Matter of fact, to show you, let me pull up my uh, 14 inch MacBook Pro and let me check the battery health on it. Cause I think, I do believe that my battery health on this, if it's not dead and it's probably dead, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. So I'll share that with you guys. Another tip that you guys may not uh, be familiar with is getting into the lock screen and setting your settings, especially when you're on a laptop if you're on battery, it has different settings versus when you're charging. Turning your display off on battery when inactive. After two minutes, your display is gonna shut off on battery. It's just trying to help you. But if you don't like that, if you don't like it cutting off, after two minutes, you can change that. So I would highly recommend you come in here and you tailor this to your liking because there's nothing more annoying than sitting there and being in the middle of something. And then your display just cuts off on you mid you know, you using it. So another cool tip I want to tell you guys about is desktops. Uh, I forgot what they call them in the true Apple term um, right here, but it's this right here. So how did I get to that? Swipe up with three fingers and then 
you can go over here to the plus and you can create multiple desktops. I use this all the time. So like, let's say on this desktop, I just want my mail app to be open all the time and so forth. Or let's say I'm working on, you know, a numbers project or I have something that I always want open, but I don't want it to clutter my screen. Or I want different spaces for different things. This is where you do that. So, okay, we got the numbers over here, but if I swipe with three fingers, now I'm back at my main desktop. Three finger swipe to the left to go to the next one and then back over that way and then I'm back at my uh, previous desktop. I used to never use these and then I started utilizing them and I use them all of the time. I have one especially for emails, one for this, one for that. So if you don't have a multi-display setup, this is a way of having multiple displays without having multiple displays. Okay, so another clutch extra tip that I just wanna share for people who have iPhones and you, know, you use your iPhone as well as your laptop, but you get text messages on your iPhone that are not iMessage, right? Obviously when you get iMessages, your messages app, those are gonna be in sync on your laptop when you pull up messages. But there's a way on your iPhone that if you go in here and you go into settings and you go under messages, so you scroll down and then you go to text message forwarding. And in text message forwarding, you're gonna see a list of all of your devices. And then you just hit the check mark to what devices you want those text messages forwarded to. So in this case with the new M2 MacBook Air 15, I would check that. And then now when I get text messages that are not iMessage, they still will be forwarded into my messages app and I can see those. And this is why this is clutch. You know how you always got a uh, two factor, you know, protection for signing in and things. And then they send you the code and you got to copy the code. Well, you know how on the phone, when the code is sent to you in like a text message, it automatically, Apple's like here, and then you just tap it and it automatically autofills. Well, guess what? You can do the same on your laptop. As long as you have the text message forwarding on, it's going to recognize it when it comes through. It'll autofill that uh, two-factor authentication code and then you're in there. Super duper clutch. Gotta love it. Now, one last thing I wanna say in this tips and tricks, if you are in the Apple ecosystem, this is another one. I can do a bunch of Apple ecosystem tips and tricks. If you guys want that video, let me know. With this having Touch ID, you can do Apple Pay. And I highly recommend it because if you are someone who uses Apple Pay and then you get on a website that offers Apple Pay, well then you're able to make a payment via the Touch ID right here, super clutch, super fast. Ah, man, I use this all the time. This is another reason why even on my docked, or my main station, I use a uh, external Apple keyboard with the Touch ID. That's why I won't go third party for the keyboard because Touch ID is just so clutch. If you use passwords in the Apple thing, you know, the keychain, and you need the password and you gotta use the Touch ID, boom. So simple. There's so many uh, things within continuity in the Apple ecosystem that just makes the overall picture works so much better. So those are those tips and tricks. And before I get out of here, I wanna share my 14 inch MacBook Pro's battery health, uh, cause I think it should have a little charge to it now. The MacBook Pro 14 inch is on. I've been using it for a year, completely plugged in. I do not have 100%, <laughs> but I do have 93% maximum capacity. And I had to optimize battery charging on. I was uh, screenshot it, put it on the screen so you guys can see that. But again, 93% after, Actually, I think it's longer than a year. I've been using the 14. I can't remember, you know, so many Apple products come out so consistently and I get them all. So I've been using that 14 inch M1 Max. This is the M1 Max. This is not the M2 Max. So I've had this thing probably a couple of years. Neither here nor there, just know that you want to turn on the optimized uh, charging. But again, if you guys want a more in-depth like continuity showing, if you got a laptop, you got a phone, you got an iPad, and showing a lot of the features and how they all work together, hit that in the comment section below. Also, if there's any other tips and tricks that I did not mention, because I know there's a ton of them for setting up your new MacBook, hit me down in the comment section below so I can add those in a video in the future, or I can just use them myself. Yo, put me up on game. I appreciate it. All right, I'm out.